ancient Chinese proverb probably goes, the times they are changing. What was once funny years ago isn't allowed to be funny today. In a time where the fucking hangover is considered edgy, it's no wonder why comedies are a dying breed. With the director unable or unwilling to make any more irreverent comedies due to cancel culture and virtue signaling being a pro esport. Thus, the 2019 Joker was born to Twitter chagrin. Digibro adjacent Dick Masterson, a Netflix cuties apologist, had this to say on the current state of comedy. You got mainstream comedy, uh, mainstream comedy, you know, movies and Adam Sandler dog shit on Netflix, and uh, none of it's funny. Not, none of it's none of it's funny at all to me. Like if I go if I go to the movies or watch something on on uh, Netflix or whatever, like something that is something that was has millions of dollars put into it, I know I'm not gonna laugh one time. Like oh I I guess I'm I'm watching like what aliens thought that like they downloaded our civilization in 2000 years and then tried to make a comedy. Like this is what I guess this is what a comedy is. Like I'm watching a I'm watching like somebody tell me what a fucking comedy is. Even Million Dollar Extreme's World Peace was offered up as a sacrificial lamb to the altar of vice media and virtue. Thanks to self-proclaimed cuck Tim Heidecker and friends. Any edge comedy once had has been rounded and smoothed just like the wrinkles in the average comedy fan's soft brain. It's important to reflect on just how far we've descended into this woken nightmare. Meet Gary Niger, a queer African-American mascot of the troll group Gay Nigger Association of America, the group name derived from the Danish exploitation film Gay Niggers from Outer Space. What started off as an IRC server, which is similar to what gay pedophiles use Discord for, that spent most of its time griefing Slashdot and its users, the group would eventually be involved in a litany of current events which led to prison sentencing and worldwide hate due to their sexuality and ethnicity, or perhaps the rampant trolling. Let's see. A picture as wide as time and its notoriety stretching across the internet. To some it's just two hands stretching an asshole open, with a hard dick lurking in the background. To others it's a lifestyle. Think Lululemon but for antisocial retards. Somehow, this picture has made its way into the mainstream consciousness like a hot flash of fourth grade regret. When mentioned in public, Goatee is recognized more so than Harambe or a criminal fentanyl user with a penchant for deep knee neck massage. The internet fell in love with this stretch scamp and so did GNAA. What started off as simply getting your friends to unknowingly view gore-like gay porn quickly spiraled into a tool to cause mass disruption to anything within a two mile radius of the blast zone. To understand the GNAA's humor, you only need to look deep within, like a colonoscopy procedure. Slashdot. In the early days, starting off as a Slashdot trolling group, the community forum was subject to multiple campaigns of trolling due to being busy losing their collective shit at the thought of trolls posting shock sites on their Christian platform. This led to a 2004 Slashdot story about, of all things, a Dremel pumpkin carving kit where the first reply to the post was a jack-o'-lantern's gaping goatsy. Normally, posting shock content would be deleted and end in the user's banning, but because this was not porn, it was left and skyrocketed to the top comment position. Enough attention was gained that the Dremel company actually added the shock image on their fucking official website, completely unaware of what they were advertising for all customers to gaze deeply into. As if that wasn't good enough, it wasn't uploaded but embedded on the site. And the owner of the embedded image, GNAA member Sam Hosevar, who quickly added the group's logo onto the image, causing all of Slashdot's mods to have a panic attack at the reach of the group. Last measure. Rukus, a literal fucking earthworm, spent countless nights binge drinking and watching women shitting on themselves and came up with the first instance of Last Measure, a Frankenstein's monster of shock images, ear rape, and scripts stopping you from hiding the fact that you're clearly gay. Tub girl, a picture of a woman spraying fecal matter on her face. Penis bird, an image of a scarlet macaw perched Go on a man's rot. CX Hello JPEG, a picture of a man stretching his A picture of three elderly men lying on a bed naked. Oh, a picture of a man's genitals. Yes. An image of a picture of a man wearing a condom. A man in a sex art. 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 A man in a sex this clever website was like a Chinese finger torture bind, where the more you tried to close out of it, the worse it got. After being welcomed by Meatspin and friends, audio will play. Hey everyone, I'm looking at gay porno. And open infinite moving browser windows. 
the tech savvy among us would think to pull up Task Manager and end process on the browser, but pressing Control, Alt, or Delete all open a JavaScript pop-up that tries to block Task Manager. The site also opens the computer's default email program and creates email drafts pre-filled out with send to, email addresses, subject line, and body of email telling the receiver, Hey everyone, I'm looking at and a link to last measure. Last measure was unable to read a user's contact or send an email, but this bluff was good enough for people to think it was sending out emails to colleagues, informing them of their coworkers' depravity. Updates and revisions were common, and the website had gone from being written in JavaScript to Flash scripts and even Ruby to avoid pop-up blockers, and Flash is continuing. Tireless effort was spent making sure people knew they were gay, as Last Measure would become one of the most important tools in the gay niggers arsenal. It would instill fear in the recipient's heart after looking down the barrel of a lubed man's stretched orifice. Free note attack. Started by Rukas the Nightcrawler one late night, in between attempts of playing Smoke on the Water on a broken Stratocaster and shots of Rolling Rock. This invertebrate discovered that the Firefox browser had an overlooked vulnerability where everyone's favorite racist homophobic group could send commands to IRC servers, most notably Freenode due to their sheer incompetence in running a public server, mostly thanks to their staff of transgendered autists who suffer from a superiority complex. This was done thanks to Firefox and some other browsers banning all ports except for one. Port 6667, which is the default port used in IRC servers. Thus, shenanigans were in play. Using this exploit, GNAA set up last measure so that anyone visiting the Porno Gore site would automatically connect to Freenode in the background and spam messages with links back to last measure, creating an Ouroboros of shit, owners, and cum. Freenode Ops, after much deliberation, decided to panic and take a scorched earth approach at resolving the issue. Thinking it was bots posting the links, they added an auto K line to ban IP addresses who were spamming, which just banned their actual user base and even Freenode Ops themselves. With full pandemonium and swing, and the doomsday clock ticking closer and closer to midnight, the Ops took an informational approach. They put site-wide messages out, stating the motherland was under attack, and to remain indoors. But your MAGA nephew's favorite gang of online bullies had a response for this. Sam Hosevar, a GNAA member from surrender-prone French nationality, stated, Oh hey buddy, the Ops started broadcasting messages telling people along the lines of an attack is going on, please do not click on the links. For more information, see freenode.net slash what you know, what but do you know? So what we did was have the last measure zombies bots post exactly the same message, except with freenode.net instead of freenode.net in the URL. A domain we keep just in case make a good prank and redirect the domain to last measure, causing even more people to click the links buddy. That's right, a strat as old as Napster and as laughable as Frostwire. These gray hat AV club members kept Fino.net, a similar looking domain on file in the event the URL's intrinsic value could yield a high return on investment of laughs and fuckery. And today was profit day. This caused even more users to get banned for visiting Last Measure and continuing the cycle. While this was happening, GNAA added numerous new channels with names implying they were troll channels. These channels were full of legitimate users, and when mods saw these popping up at nauseam, they took the bait and banned all accounts in the channel. At this point, Freenode staff was so paranoid that any user asking what was happening was banned outright. Mods were in a state of psychosis, large swaths of Freenode users banned with no reason as to why, and the last thing these accounts would see was a man's gaping asshole before being terminated. This attack lasted for over a month before the staff got their communal shit together and upgraded the server. I'll repeat that. An entire month. For reference, other IRC networks like Fnet were targeted as well, but countermeasures on the site were implemented within hours of the attack. OSX hooks. Apple and Tumblr's favorite shit posters have a tumultuous history to say the least. Somewhat foreshadowing events to come, Jesuit X leaked doctored screenshots of the upcoming OSX 10.4 Tiger days before its scheduled release. Linus Tech Tips and other OS fags had a split personality meltdown between wanting to believe they were first to witness this and not wanting to trust the GNAA. Not too long after, GNAA went back and pulled the same troll now with a new file extension. On the heels of Apple announcing it would be switching to Intel hardware, your favorite depraved autist released a BitTorrent ISO image. To the tech illiterate, this just means they released a downloadable CD with software on it. Tens of thousands of internet tech bloggers flocked to Torrent, and when they booted it up, they were greeted with a familiar greased up butthole. This troll was covered by CNN, G4, and even Hulk Hogan's Gawker. A similar, more obvious version of this troll was pulled years later with LinuxForNiggers.iso, which, when booted up, showed a slideshow of black culture stereotypes. Gamergate. All roads lead to Gamergate. 
Zoe Quinn vs. Atheist Nerds, GNAA gained access to the Pro Gamergate primary 8chan board, which was used as a main staging ground for supporters of the movement. They ransacked it and had it shut down. They also began false flag operations, posing as active Gamergate members to piss off feminist frequencists with mean tweets, as well as releasing docs on the side of the pro Gamergate members. The pro Gamergate commune smelled an imposter among them, but couldn't find where the leak was coming from to stop it. Hillary and Bill's Wikipedia. Another member, Meep Sheep, edits Hillary and Bill Clinton's Wikipedia pages during the run-up to the 2016 election with Reminder that voting for Hillary Clinton this November means proving how much of a spineless boring cuck you are. Nuclear war will be inevitable. As will be Bill Clinton raping more women and children. Save the America you know and love by voting Donald Trump. Also girls send ass pics to at Meepy Sheepy. Obama's website. Presidential-elect Barry Obama's official website's search feature suggests Gay Nigger Association of America as a group. Exposing his ties with this black homosexual interest group. Group group. Anime furries gather at the Akon. 24 convention, where generally not approving of anime, decided to bully mentally stunted and relatively overweight female cosplayers who think Halloween costumes can be worn as regular attire without relentless mocking being flung their very large way. Hashtag Grope Crew was started by Meep Sheep and others, where success stories of fabricated gropings to female attendees were celebrated on Twitter. Panic ensued, as is commonly a response to GNAA being in the area, and women who had no chance of ever being a target of a groping warned fellow congoers to watch out for these attackers, even going as far as to reach out to the local police whose response was nothing more than Y'all behave. Fellow trolls confirmed Meep and others had in fact groped female cosplayers and to not take this lightly. Despite, no self-respecting GNAA member would willingly attend something so faggy, whether it make women cry or not. Cut from here. Justin Bieber is caught on camera smoking weed. Oh my God. 4chan's B tries to start a campaign called Cut for Bieber and botches the whole operation. GNAA oh take God. it over and oh signal boost the hashtag all over Twitter oh where it becomes the number one trending hashtag. This is right off the heels of the hashtag bald for Bieber troll campaign months prior. What followed was a mixed reaction of much of the internet laughing at how retarded someone would have to be for this to be their way of protest, while the rest of the internet was blown away at how psycho Justin Bieber fans were. The media picked up the narrative as they had nothing better to do than wait for Twitter to do something, and a HuffPost article stated it's unlikely anyone not self-harming already would start from this, and no confirmed cases or deaths have ever come out of this. Sandy Luke Crew. Hurricane Sandy happens. GNAA starts a similar troll to Grope Crew. Starting a Twitter hashtag, Sandy Luke Crew, the group pretends to be looters and posts pictures of their own shit pretending to have stolen it. The media is terrified some looter is going to steal their camera equipment when out in the field. ABC News, The Daily Mail, and King of Conspiracy, Alex Jones, decide to use all 0% of the knowledge gained from the thousands of dollars wasted on a journalism degree and ran with the story that people were in the flooded streets robbing Best Buys and Foot Lockers. This prompted the New York National Guard to send in more than 1,000 troops to stop the burgling spree. All the while, Anonymous is shouting to all of no one that the accounts using the hashtag were troll accounts. This attempt by Anons was quickly stopped by Twitter's anti-abuse algorithms. Interstage all night. At this point, the president and historic leader Time Cop, who created the GNAA, left the group, and after exchanging hands between a few dictators, kosherist Gentile Andrew Orenheimer becomes the newly elected president. Little known fact, Weave holds the honor of being one of the few people kicked off the free speech social media gab, raising the number from 109 to 110. Encyclopedia Dramatica. Many of the guys were heavily involved in the original hub for trolling Chris Chan and other lol cows, Encyclopedia Dramatica. Meep Sheep was an admin for the site. Weave, going by the pseudonym Joseph Evers, ran the website in its liquid Chris Chan golden years and somehow got all of Australia against him in the website. Even Zager oh, fuck that guy. got a turn at owner, bringing about its darkest years as he was found to be completely incompetent at running a website. He would fill the website with shady ads where one rogue click would infect your computer with trojans and keyloggers and delete your system 32. The entire site would be down regularly, but this is what happens when a meth head becomes owner of a site due to literally everyone else being either arrested or a fat acceptance live journal Keemstar who denounced their own site. Competent owners did follow after the remaining staff stripped him of the website, and Zager was left holding a $100,000 debt when a lawsuit was issued against him for a post on the site written about a pedophile in denial. And yet, this wasn't even the worst thing an admin of ED has done. C1 Kiwi Farms threat on Poop Napkins. 
after the Firefox and Freenode vulnerability was found, GNAA finally realized no news media would broadcast a segment openly speaking positive of a bunch of gay niggers no matter where they associated, so an offshoot of GNAA was formed so they could be taken seriously by the media when bringing forth these types of exploits. The name chosen, Goatsy Security, with the tagline, Gaping Holes Exposed, would be used as a sister organization. A zero-day exploit was found by Goatsy Security for the Safari browser. Zero-day vulnerabilities refer to devs at Apple having no idea about this bug that was already being exploited. This got Goatsec some mainstream attention, but the peak of their notoriety was just about to come. at and Apple Store so imagine this, it's 2010 and the iPad just came out. It's sleek and can run on a high-speed 3G connection. Though AT&T are the only provider as an option, you're one of the first consumers to purchase it, and when you begin this setup, you enter your email address and personal information, and unknowingly have released it to everyone in the public who wants it. Goatsec found out that AT&T's website had a vulnerability, as some would call it, where if you change the info in the URL's host name or file name, it would take you to a different page. So, member Jackson Brown, being a Mac fag, grabbed the new iPad and set up his tablet with his info. Afterwards, noticing the page he was directed to had a URL akin to thefuckisflash.com slash registration dash 1964. Jackson Brown then increased the 1964 to 1965 and was greeted with movie mogul and all around great guy Harvey Weinstein's email, info, and even real time location of his new gizmo. Many other prominent figures had their info exposed, like high ranking military officials and politicians like Mayor Michael Bloomberg. Apple never anticipated its mouth breathing customers to have the cognitive ability to change info in their URLs. And up until this point, they were right. Jackson Brown did the only thing he thought best and went straight to GNAA's IRC for his virtual dick sucking to commence. It was all worth it. Soon after, Weave and Jackson pitched these findings to any media outlet that would listen in hopes for a development deal. That's when Gawker, having no sex tapes to release as news, takes up the story. Before the story was published, Goatsec did notify AT&T, who secured this flaw that wasn't a flaw, before the public heard the story. To say this story blew up would be as much of an understatement as calling the Challenger launch fiery but mostly peaceful. Every news network was rushing to Google what an HTTP request was and get the story out. GOAT's security Is that how you say it? was being discussed ad nauseum. Interviews with members who were out sick on this troll were being asked for, and suburban families pondered what a GOATS he was for the first time. It was all worth it. Weave, and I guess to some extent Jackson, became icons for anti-capitalism or anti-corruption, and maybe PC master race supremacist, who knows? This was right around the time of Occupy Wall Street, so whatever justification could be worried about later. All we knew is that Weave, and role-playing year at a three-day music festival in a New York City park, was pretty cool. Goatsy Security received awards for their work towards internet security, and AT&T was lambasted for their short-sighted approach to user security and were found to be aware of the flaw beforehand, but chose not to fix it. Oh, and remember that Safari browser vulnerability? When it was fixed, these geniuses forgot to include the fix on iPad, further proving that people who sell you an extra-large phone that can't actually make any phone calls don't care about delivering you a stable product. All good things must come to an end. Then the feds realized they contract AT&T for everything from telecommunications infrastructure to IP-based networking services. They got scared someone could spy on them, spying on them, so they got a search warrant and raided Weave's apartment where they found copious amounts of cocaine, LSD, ecstasy, and other pills. Arrested him on drug possession charges and tried to get anything about the AT&T hack out of him. Now aside from being an anti-Israel ginger that even Joe Rogan could tower over, Weave is strong in his convictions, and rather than fold, he told the federal agency to go fuck itself. Meanwhile, like the traitor that he is, Judas Brown gave the FBI all the receipts and info on the group, hoping for a lighter sentencing, where the feds promptly fined him $40,000 and restricted computer access from him for years. Do they still need paper applications? Weave was later charged and found guilty of identity fraud and conspiracy to access a computer without authorization. Sentenced to three years and five months in federal prison and was released after 15 months with the help of Electronic Frontier Foundation when another court vacated the charges on appeal. Cellar dwellers across the web rejoiced at his release as Weave had at this point become sort of a hobbit creature folk hero for internet rights. Pictures came out of him sporting a new American History X chest tattoo. Much of the public support for Weave slowed at this point, as TechCrunch, Wired, and HuffPost decided it'd be too difficult for their readers to understand the multifaceted nature of the human condition. But then again, he's just a Nazi, right? So fuck him. G and AA had gone semi-dormant at this point, as many felt Goatsy security had flown too close to the sun, and what was once a group posting gay porn to forum boards had lost the plot. 
Others were spooked by the federal subpoenas and didn't want to be Assange until their death day. Was it all worth it? GNAA was over. That's for bullying me! There was a bit of a revival thanks to longtime spokesperson and former president Literal Ka and rampant anime user and now current sitting president Meep Sheep, but the group is nothing more than a slightly homosexual shade of what it used to be. Think going from Rip Taylor to Pauly Shore, where the group trolls 12-year-old brony fans and laughs at middle schoolers' waifus. So what are the lasting impressions left from GNAA's glory years? Well, besides generally pissing off everyone from Moot of 4chan to the pretentious and unemployed who operate Wikipedia while waiting for their fibromyalgia disability check, not much. Freenode is having a major civil war at the moment and Gary Niger can be found hanging out in Wasteland 2 as an NPC. The group has been labeled an extremist right-wing terrorist group yeah, right. by an organization no one has ever heard of, despite crippling pro-gamergate organizations and trolling Alex Jones into a more paranoid stupor than usual. Probably the most notable current event was when a senior cybersecurity expert for the Biden presidential campaign was found to be a former orbiter of GNAA and subsequently fired for affiliating with the group half a decade prior. Despite the fact she is a brown woman with a physique of a celestial body, the media did everything they could to categorize her as a racist who used the N-word despite being one of the few pigments socially accepted to use the forbidden word. At least social justice is helping black and brown women by removing them from careers in STEM and forcing them to rely on the welfare state. Rukus has not been seen in the years since the last rain shower forced him to the soft wet earth surface and we've had a drug induced paranoia attack where he thought the federal government was plotting against him which may or may not be true and has become a professional immigrant from everywhere from the Middle East to the desolate reaches of Eastern Europe while writing for race realism publication The Daily Stormer and zoom bombing Jewish teen webinars. Meep Sheep's Law is an internet legal philosophy that states yesterday's irony is today's sincerity. Much of what the GNAA did was absurdist humor, both internal amongst the group and external with their trolling. Please see this press release from the archives of their website declaring a boycott on all foods that makes firm taste bad. Meep Sheep's Law can be used as a lens to view the group in two ways. On one hand, you have so many of the jokes like Jews did WTC and Linux for niggers clearly meant in jest. If you look at former acclaimed members' social media accounts today, you see everything from black fists with the hashtag BLM to personal pronouns supported in their bio. While once interpreted as intended, the same media organizations who stated this is nothing more than trolling are condemning the group as hate crime terrorists simply because they use the hard R when they're not supposed to. To the credit of the group's critics, you could also say, where the first wave of GNA members were absurdist humorists, the following iterations were post-ironic in that they took the joke seriously. Hatesec, a fellow homosexual journalist, who was named from former president Asshurt Macfags, Rest in peace. had this to say. It's funny that they would hate we for fame fagging, having nothing to do with his um, ideology at all, because there's a lot of them with those with those shitty beliefs chilling in GNAA. Though this narrative falls apart when you look at how the group dissolved when Weave was released from prison and his ideology was plastered on his chest. Some members have openly disavowed his beliefs while many others realize that's a gay thing to do and those on a witch hunt for a group of gay black guys wouldn't be quelled without blood. He himself has even stated the group has had many different political affiliations and types of people within the group. So what did the GNAA do? Was it just a group of dudes, like-minded dudes like you, working towards one goal? Uh, no, there's, there's a lot of different, you know, pers personality types and political yeah. affiliations and reasoning in the GNAA. I actually, we, we did have one actual gay inward in the organization. You know? I think you told me that. You're like, we had one. Yeah. So we were good. Yeah, we, we had, had our mazes covered. <laughs> <laughs> If nothing else, the group has given all different backgrounds of people countless laughs through their ironic approach, much like Babylon B or The Onion, and shown the shortcomings in our media's research for a narrative. But much like a G.G. Allen performance, today's social climate cannot accept a lewd, rude, nude dude with attitude, no matter the context. Don't you understand? We're living in the most strict society we've ever seen. It's insane. You gotta hide from these people. People are gonna go, where's the joke? Listen, it's not up to you to argue what a joke is or what's not. They don't know what a joke is. There's a lot of people, they don't, it, it's not a concept to them. To say like, mm, black people are ends. <laughs> they don't in a million years would not understand why that's funny to us. They don't understand why it's just simply saying George Floyd is funny. Approved comedy will slowly shrink to a group of topics you can count off on one hand, and irony will go the way of the dinosaur. At least we'll still have such great comedic gems as the Big Bang Theory. Bazinga.